Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to an introduction to Programming Remaster. In the previous episode of this series, we discussed functions, both what they are and the basics of how to write them. We also talked about how programming languages come with many built-in functions that make writing whatever program you're working on much quicker and easier. Today, we are going to discuss the import statement, which allows us programmers to access many more functions that carry out a variety of tasks without us having to write them all ourselves. You will find yourself using many import statements and, by extension, many function libraries as you work on any program, so it's best to understand what they are and how to use them. Before we get all in depth and technical, Start by imagining you're trying to build a house. Now, if you really wanted, and I'm not sure why you would, you could very well begin by growing your own trees, chopping your own wood, mining the materials for, and manufacturing your own tools and nails, and building your house straight from scratch. That is one option that you have. However, I think we would all agree that it is much easier to go to your local hardware store, pick up the tools, wood, nails, and whatever else you might need, and get working from there. You see, there are people out there that already made all these things for you, so doing that extra work yourself is really unnecessary. I think it's clear to see which option is easier. The same philosophy applies when you write your own program. For any given language, there are many hundreds of function libraries, which are essentially just collections of functions and classes that other people have taken the time to write for you. Now, if you are not sure what classes are, you can check out our Introduction to Object-Oriented Programming series linked in the description. However, for now, think of classes as simply data types with associated functions. Generally, the classes and functions within a function library will be designed to interact with one another. Each function library covers a specific topic which you may or may not find useful, depending on the program you are trying to write. For example, certain languages will have a special math library that carries out mathematical functions for you, or an I.O. library that helps you to take input from the user and output information in return. A math library tends to be useful in just about any program you write, but an I.O. library will only be useful in specific programs which you need it for. On screen now, you can see examples of many types of function libraries that you can find in just about any language. This is just a small selection, but it should give you an idea of just how many libraries there are out there. By properly utilizing these function libraries, you will be able to get a lot more done with a lot less work required. You can think of this as being analogous to purchasing professional quality tools from the store, rather than first creating the tools yourself, then using them to build your house. So, function libraries are clearly very useful. But how do we access them? We do this via the import statement. On screen now, you can see a basic import statement in Python. Specifically, it imports the NumPy library, which gives you access to data structures and functions relating to matrices and linear algebra. This is the most straightforward way to use the import statement. By importing NumPy like this, it gives me access to every package, class, and function within the NumPy library. We will get into what exactly a package is in just a moment. The code on screen now creates a NumPy array, which is a class specific to the NumPy library, out of a Python list. To access anything in whatever library I've imported in my code, I have to reference it using the name of the library I've imported. This is known as using its namespace. On the third line of code, 
you can see me reference the numpy.array class in this way. If I don't want to have to type out the library name each time, I can use the import statement, as in this second yellow example. The asterisk instructs my program to import everything from the library, like in the red example. However, it does it in such a way that I don't need to use the library's namespace to reference its functions or classes. Similarly, in the white example, I don't have to type out the name of the library to access the array class. However, instead of importing every single function and class from the NumPy library, it specifically imports the array class. If I were to try to reference anything else from the NumPy library in this white example, it would raise an error. Furthermore, I could instead import a package or collection of functions and classes within the NumPy library, which would give me access to those specific functions and classes. This is done the same way as importing a specific class. However, you put the name of the package instead of the name of a class. So you can think of libraries as collections of packages, which themselves are collections of classes and functions. It may seem that importing libraries in such a way that does not require typing out the library's namespace is much more convenient. However, it can lead to issues. Large programs tend to import from many different function libraries, and if two libraries have a class or function of the same name, your program can get confused. To illustrate this, consider I'm importing from both NumPy and the fictional NymPy library, which both contain an array class. Your computer can tell the difference between numpy.array and numpy.array, as in the first example, but not the difference between array and array. Thus, the second example will raise an error. On another note, some libraries can have quite long names, and for that reason, you can define what you want to refer to a library as when you import it. As you can see in the final blue example, I import NumPy as NP, which allows me to reference it as NP in my code, which saves me a few letters every time I write it. Keep in mind that I didn't have to choose NP, of course. I could choose whatever I wanted to reference it as. So now, you can see four different examples of code which do the exact same thing, but each with different upsides and downsides. It's possible you're thinking that importing more than you need is best so that you don't forget to import some function by accident and thus trigger an error when you try to use it. However, it is generally best to be as specific as possible, as importing more than you need to is a waste of computational power and memory and will increase the load time of your program. For smaller programs, this isn't such a big deal. However, in programs where you are importing from many different libraries, this can really add up if you aren't being specific. Furthermore, remember to include your import statements at the top of your program, as they must be placed before you try to access the library you've imported, or else your program won't know what you're talking about. If you're working on your program and you're not sure what library would be useful for you to use, just perform a Google search for the type of functions you are looking for, and chances are there will be a library that has what you need. However, most of the time, you are going to have to write your own functions to fit the specific needs of your program. If you are interested in how that is done, stay tuned for the next episode in this series, where we will be covering how to write functions. Be sure to like this video if you learned something and subscribe so that you won't miss our other videos coming out soon. With all that being said, thank you for watching.